my brain's going to mentally come up with the conclusion for all of these answers. And you know what? I never found it. I never found it because my heart was hardened and I was not willing to look for it in Jesus. I was like, I just wanted to start this video by asking a few questions. What is life and where did the earth come from? Who are you? Why are you here? Why are you alive? Does your life have purpose? And what's going to happen when you die? Are those questions that you've ever thought about or that you're asking yourself or that you ask yourself? If they are, great. If they're not, you should start asking those questions because the answers to those questions matter. And you know that because those questions are things that a lot of times people just kind of push out of their mind because they're so big and they're so heavy. Like, what is the meaning of life? And why are we here? And does any of this matter? And what's going to happen when I leave this world? What's going to happen when my body dies? Like, what is next? Is there a next? Like, those are questions that when you hear and when you're questioning, you can feel the weight of them. You can feel the importance of them. You know they're they're critical questions to ask and that's why sometimes people push them away but we need to ask them because the answers matter your life can be full of so many things it can be full of fame and money and power you can have the perfect um, spouse you can have kids you can even just have the simple life a good job you know a happy family you can have a dog maybe maybe a few cats live out on a ranch or maybe you want to be in the city you know Whatever that looks like to you, whatever your ideal, perfect dream life looks like to you, wonderful. But what's the point? Like, why? Like, why does it even matter? You might like it. It might bring you joy. You know, it might be cool. But but what's the point? What's the point of joy? What's the point of having stuff that makes you comfortable? What's the point of any of these things? Like, when you really look at it for what it is, you can see... If there's no purpose behind it, if there's no reason for it, then it's all in vain. And so there are answers to these questions. And I'm not saying those things don't matter, like, you know, but I'm saying that we need to figure out what matters. Like, what is the purpose of our life? Why are we here? And why are we created? And also, what is going to happen when we die? Because those are questions that in the way that we live our life, as we build our life, whatever that looks like for you, it matters why we're doing it. It matters the root reason why we're even here, right? Now, many people can just say, well, this is my truth and this is your truth. So we can each have our own truths. Like I'm here and this is my purpose. This is what I've decided. And many people are like, I don't need God to tell me my purpose. I don't need God to show me any of these answers because I'm gonna make it for myself. Okay, you can make that for yourself and someone else can make this their life. That's wonderful. But is life full of subjective truths or is there an objective truth to the reason why we're here? Because if it is subjective, if there is no reason why we're here, then guess what? You can add a fake meaning to your life or you can come up with something mentally why you're alive. But if that's the truth, then that's the truth. Then there's no reason you're alive and you were created for nothing. And what's going to happen when you die? Probably nothing, right? Because if there's no purpose, then there's no there's no reason or you're just going to be a blob in the air or whatever it is, right? Um, but I'm here to say that that isn't true. And you were created with a purpose. You know, the Bible says that the heavens declare the glory of God, right? The Bible says that the rocks cry out in God's place. The Bible says that creation screams that God is real. And so we are without excuse is what the Bible says. And knowing that there's a creator because you can wake up every morning and guess what? You woke up again in the morning, right? You get up, you go outside, you look at what's outside, the sun rise. Maybe you wake up too late to see the sun rise. That's me too, right? But you hear the birds chirping or you see the squirrel running across the street. You look at the, the butterflies and the bugs and the grass and the air and just all these really detailed things and you know there's a creator even just looking at yourself and how, how complex you are and how complex your body is and the way that it works and functions and the way that everything is it's so detailed right you look around at the world and you say this is here how could it be created from nothing right so the fact that we know that there's a god we know that there's a creator out there right 
we in our souls and our spirits and you can reject that but your spirit knows that's true to the deepest part of you you know there's something there you know there's something more and it wants to know our creator and why because that's what we were created for we were created to know our creator we were created to be in relationship with god with jesus right that is what we were created for and the lord gives us so many different things in our life and and you know dreams and desires and goals and and purposes but at the end of the day what is the reason for what you do is it for him is it for his glory is it for his kingdom is it for his purpose is your heart in line with what his heart's in line for or is it for yourself is it for your life because the bible says those who try to save their life will lose it but those who lose their life for my sake meaning for jesus's sake will find it right and so why are you alive and why are you living? And a lot of people will see that or think of that and say, well, I don't want to do that. And I don't want to live for God. I want to live for myself. That's your choice because we have free will, right? But I think a lot of the times the reason people really say that or think that is because they don't realize what they're really saying. To live for God is to live with purpose. To know why we're alive is to find freedom, is to find the place where our spirit, our soul really is resting because who created you? God created you. And so if God created you, don't you think the person who created you knows the best use of your life and your time and where you fit and where you work and where you flourish? Don't you think he would know that? So why don't we trust him with our lives? Why don't we trust him with, you know, his purpose for us? We're going to look at a little bit of scripture um, because at the end of the day, if you want to know the truths to these things, do not take my word for it. You know, I'm telling you what I've come to know, but I've come to know this by a re revelation from Jesus, from the Holy Spirit, right? The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit are one, and the Holy Spirit has shown me these things, right? So that's how I know it. And the Bible is the book of life. This is the book that tells us the answers to these things, as well as creation, as well as things that God has created. But the Bible is a gift. And so in here we can find life. Matthew 7, 7 through 8 says, Ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and it will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives and the one who seeks finds. To the one who knocks it will be opened. So that's what the Bible says. And we know that's talking about Jesus. We're knocking, we're seeking, we're looking for that door, right? We're knocking on that door. We're looking for what's behind the door. What is the answers? What is the meaning? Why are we here? All of these questions we're seeking to know. And what is the answer? It will always, always, always be Jesus. And how do we know that that's what, you know, the scripture is talking about? Well, we can look at Revelations 3.20, right? And this is what that says. Behold. I stand at the door and knock. This is Jesus saying this. I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come into him and eat with him and he with me. So he's saying that he is standing at that door. So when you hear his voice, when you hear him call, you know, this might be that, right? This might be that longing, that desire, the, these questions in your mind is you and your your spirit knowing I need, I need, I need my God, I need my creator. And I believe we're all at that point, right? Whether we suppress it or not. And so he is there. He's already with you. He's already at the door. So that when you ask and you seek and you knock, that he's going to be the one to answer. Truly, when our hearts are humbled. Because the Bible is actually full of stories of God doing wonderful, miraculous miracles for people. And they still go, man, I still don't believe, right? He's literally parted waters, if you know that story, for the Israelites. He parts the waters, he gets them through, and then they go, eh, I still don't know if I believe. But he parted the waters. Can you imagine going to the beach and you just see the waters parted for you? You know, and you would think, yeah, God, if you would just, you know, make lightning strike or make this happen, then then I'll believe, right? But really, the Bible says no. If you don't have a humble enough heart to to seek out Jesus and to find him, then he could do the most miraculous sign in the world and you still wouldn't believe. And so what do we do? 
we humble our hearts or we ask God to humble our hearts, right? We're open, we're willing. We come to this realization that we don't know everything. Because I tried to seek out the truth. I tried to rack my mind. I thought my brain was God or something. I was like, my brain's gonna mentally come up with the conclusion for all of these answers. And you know what? I never found it. I never found it because my heart was hardened and I was not willing to look for it in Jesus. I was like, he is not it because I had this wrong view of him. So I looked everywhere else and my heart might have been open to other things. But at the end of the day, what was I seeking out? What was my heart looking for? It was looking for my wisdom, my understanding. I'm going to figure it out. I'm going to understand. And I never did. And the moment that my heart was humbled because I came to this conclusion, I don't know the answer. I, I don't know the answer. Even the answers that I think I know, they don't make sense. I know in my spirit there's something missing and I don't know what it is. That's when Jesus came in. That's when, when I would hear scripture, when I would hear the word, that it began to make sense to me. And I kept walking in it and I still had questions. But the more I walked with a humble heart into reading the word and to seeking out Jesus and who he is, the more and more and more he's revealed himself to me. He's shown himself to me and my spirit's at peace because of it. It's this supernatural peace, right? This confidence in what I believe in, right? This confidence because it's not even coming from me, but it's coming from my creator because I know him. I'm going to read a few more scriptures. We're going to go to Hebrews 4.12. For the word of God is living and active, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing to the division of soul and of spirit, of joints and of marrow, and discerning the thoughts and intentions of the heart. So the word, the Bible says it's alive. People like to think of the Bible and think of it as some boring book that they don't want to read. But you know what the Bible says about itself? It says that it's alive that it's living word of God, that it's active and that it's sharper than any double-edged sword and that it actually pierces to the division of soul and spirit of joints and marrow and discerns the thoughts and intentions of your heart. That's what this does. This shows us truth. Now you can also seek out truth and you can go and try to figure out who God is. You can go to church, you can go to Bible study, you can go to discussions and conversations and all of these cool things. You can be on YouTube and that's wonderful. That's great. But at the end of the day, this Bible is going to be the thing to absolutely change your life, to give you the answers that your soul, that your spirit desires and to just radically transform everything. Now, many people, they don't want to know the truth. They want to live the way they want to live. They don't want to follow God. They don't want to change their lives. They don't want to be morally good people. They want to say, no, morally, I make my own judgments and I make my own standards. They want to be the God of their own life. And God allows us to do that because we have free will. But if you choose that route, you're not without excuse, right? And so here's what Hebrews 2, 1 through 3 says. It says, therefore, we must pay much closer attention to what we have heard least we drift away from it. For since the message declared by angels proved to be reliable and every transgression or disobedience received a just retribution, how shall we escape if we neglect such a great salvation? It was declared at first by the Lord and it was attested to us by those who heard. Verse four of chapter two says, while God also bore witness by signs and wonders and various miracles, and by gifts of the Holy Spirit distributed according to his will. And so God's not saying, go figure it out. You know, have fun. I'm not going to help. No, it says God bore witness by signs and wonders and various miracles by gifts of the Holy Spirit distributed according to his will. And our spirits, we do. That's what we do. We neglect. We push away. We reject. We don't want to know the answers to these things because we might have to change our life. Things might have to look different if we know why we're created. And for some people, that's a miracle. To know those answers is a miracle. But for others, it's not. And they want to reject it, right? And God doesn't leave you alone in this journey. He doesn't leave you alone. Because, you know, I like to say that at the end of this journey of me seeking out these answers, I found Jesus. But the truth is, Jesus found me. 
because I wasn't even looking to him, but I was looking for truth. And I knocked and I seeked and I asked and the door was open and who was behind it? It was Jesus. And he was like, look, here I am. I'm not what you thought I was. I am God. I hold all of these answers. You can choose me or you can neglect the truth. And I chose him. And you know what? My life looks very different. It looks very, very different. And I wouldn't have it any other way. I've found my peace. The Bible says that you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. That's in John 8, 32. Then you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. Okay. All these scriptures that I'm about to read are all in John. So we're going to go ahead and go to the start. We're going to go to John 1 verses 12 through 13, which say, But to all who did receive him, who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God, who were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. And now we're going to read John 3, 16 through 18. Now we might all know John 3, 16. Wonderful. Great, right? We've probably heard it before. But, you know, John 3, 16 doesn't end at John 3, 16. It goes John 3, 16, John 3, 17, and John 3, 18. So we're going to read all of those. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. Whoever believes in him is not condemned, but whoever does not believe is condemned already because he has not believed in the name of the only son of God. So it's saying that we stand condemned already if we are rejecting this truth, right? We're going to keep reading in John 3 and... We we're going to read verses 19 through 21. And this is the judgment. The light has come into the world and people loved the darkness rather than the light because their works were evil. For everyone who does wicked things hates the light and does not come to the light, lest his works should be exposed. But whoever does what is true comes to the light so that it may be clearly seen that his works have been carried out in God. I would say that pierces our heart right there. That if we're not coming to the truth and coming into the light, it's because we love darkness. When Jesus found me, when I found him, when my heart was humble towards him and I got the revelation of who he was, light came into my life instantly. I knew it. It was undeniable. It was undeniable. And it wasn't just, oh, great, cool. Like, that's great. I'm just going to keep living in the darkness because that's a rejection of the light. It was, that's the light, and this is the way that I was called to live and made to live. And this is the way that I'm going to choose to live because that's what we're supposed to do. And that's what we're called to do. I hope this spoke to you, maybe pierces your heart a little bit through the word. I encourage you to seek out the truth. I encourage you to read the Bible. I encourage you to keep seeking until you find the light the freedom that your spirit desires, that your soul desires, and the answers truly, not counterfeit answers, but true answers. If you're being honest with yourself, if your heart is in a humble place, then that will be in Jesus. Now, you might not know. You might say, oh, I don't know if my heart's in a humble place. Like, pray for a humble heart. You can ask God for a humble heart and for open eyes and ears. Just remember that the answer to these questions are not just, you know, what's your favorite kind of ice cream? The answers to these questions matter, but they also help us live a life that's not wasted. How freeing is that to know what we were created for, why we're alive, who our creator is, and to have a relationship with him? Are you kidding me? Praise God for what he's done for us. So I hope this spoke to you guys. I hope you enjoyed this. Feel free to subscribe and stick around for more videos like this. And I will talk to you guys soon.